Some might already know that I've made an evolution simulator. Its problem has always been the lack of similarities with real life evolution, and that it has too many abstractions. And while any sort of simulator doesn't necessarily need to obey natural laws, all other parts of the simulator behave as if they do. So it's a massive improvement now that we have carnivores and herbivores, as well as omnivores. Let's see it all in action. If you look at certain segments of the field, you'll notice they consist of so-called islands of plants. Those islands are just what the herbivorous and the omnivorous bodies are looking for, a large mass of plants that can be eaten within one go. But what is better for a carnivore to do, considering those islands attract a lot of bodies? It needs to somehow go there and benefit from so many potential victims by catching them. That's exactly what happens. Not only that, but the carnivores almost surround the islands and don't let anyone in. This is evidence the carnivores behave the way they're supposed to. You can also notice their speed is absurdly high, and that they can see really far. If you test it all yourself, you'll notice a repeating pattern of the evolution course, which is a good sign. The next question could be why it's fair to be an omnivore and be able to do what both carnivores and herbivores are designed for. In simple words, why is it not OP? Well, an omnivore only gets a certain part of the food that it eats, be it a plant or another body. So being a carnivore or a herbivore has its own advantages. Moreover, a herbivore can never get infected with a virus because it doesn't eat other bodies. So if droughts happen rarely enough, they can consistently stay afloat. 